Hey, all you rusty freaks for a quiet month. I really have to thank my viewers and especially my supporters. So, thanks. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, looking at my channel, especially recently, you can see there's been a lot of me giving away my solo survival secrets. And that's what this one is. It's a big, big, big tip, big secret on how a solo can raid. But don't forget, if you look back, you can see how a solo can get scrapped, how to increase your survivability with horses. Your base is going to be a big thing, surviving your base, not getting raided. I've shared my my go-to base many times and also done a couple of videos which give you the secret to surviving all, all while, while right long. Yeah, isn't it awesome when I do these uh, off the top of my head, <laughs> unscripted intros, umming and eyeing my way through? Anyway, let's get on with it. If you don't know me, I'm Old Man Paxis. I have six years of Rust experience, and I'm ashamed to say it's uh, about almost 13,000 hours now. That means I can get to Tier 3 and raid any time I like. Um, there's lots of ways to play Rust, but if that's what you want, if you want to get that all Tier 3 gear and be out raiding... Um, so look, let's face it, soloing is, is tough. Unless you're an absolute chad, you're going to struggle doing that as a solo because when you raid, you're going to get hijackers. You're going to get people passing by. You're, those booms go off, the whole map comes after you. Challenge is to overcome that, and this video will show you how. I'm going to give you two methods, actually, not just one. Also, if you don't have my raid checklist, you're going to have to remember PPP, PPP. P stands for prior preparal prevents piss poor performance. You can defeat yourself before you even, you know, before anyone even turns up. If you forgot something or you don't think of everything for your raid, things like doors and locks, TC, uh, bag, turret. If you're gonna do it that way, ladders, tools, a repair bench, maybe a raid base. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, raiding as a solo. I bet it's really difficult. Actually, it's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. There's two ways you can easily solo raid. Method one is speed. You arrive fast, e.g. with a horse or a minicopter, you go boom boom, you grab it, it's it's the it's the hit and run. The wham bam, thank you ma'am, the loot and scoot, the bang bang later stand. Oh, you, you get it, you get the trick, right? It's it's speed. Discounting the TC if it's locked or unlocked with another C4 or satchel or some explosive ammo you can quickly get rid of that and then get the best loot and go you, can, you should aim to do this in under 60 seconds you choose if also when you get there depending on how much loot there is you choose whether it's viable to destroy the tc or not or whether you want to lock it down or not method two this is a two-step method i've got to say here um don't be rigid in in rust being flexible and being good at improvising and adapting or evolving per the situation is key for solo survival. Still, for Rust and, and all skills um, that go more for solos, the point is that it could be a three-step or four-step. It just depends. Okay, so the key word here is misdirection or misleading or hiding the raid. So this is for satchels, rockets, uh, explosive ammo... Yeah, everything that takes longer than 10 to 20 seconds, also if it makes noise. It's so simple and obvious. I'm always shocked when I see big solo YouTubers fail to do this. Although they might not be doing it to survive. Maybe they're doing it for to make their video exciting. Anyway, they're not doing it um, the best way. To actually survive and to do so consistently when raiding. Um, not to mention, you don't want to lose all your booms. You, you'll do this method, the method that I'm showing you now, the, um, the second method. It's a safer method. So you simply do it in steps. So, for example, if you're using satchels on stone, and I recommend that's all you raid, by the way, anyway. Don't, don't bother raiding um, metal bases or honeycomb bases. So anyway, if you're using satchels, you, you chuck seven or eight of them on the wall, even all nine, if, you, if you're being cocky or if you, you know the server. or you Anyway, like I said, be flexible. But if you're worried that someone will hear you or that you're going to have hijackers, you throw seven or eight of them, or nine, and then you leave fast 
with your vehicle or horse. Yes, you go home. Um, you just do some relaxation. You wait. You, you literally wait for 20, 30, even up to 50 minutes. It depends on the server. I can't stress this enough. Many Rust players are very persistent, very patient. They will wait and search and wait and search. Um, but if you wait, you know, they. if you just uh, go back to your base and watch a video or take a break, um, whoever is, whoever might hijack you will just assume it was a one-off or someone renovating their base or whatever, and they'll give up. That's when you go back and you finish the whatever wall you're throwing or the roof that you're throwing at. You throw one more satchel or two more satchels. should be boom, boom. And then you treat it exactly the same as method one. Like the wham, bam, thank you, man. You loot as fast as you can, which means you know in advance what kind of things you want. Like if you need resources, don't even, you know, just briefly look through their boxes. But, you know, don't scan forever. Just grab all the resources you, you most need or fill your inventory with AKs if that's what you're after. Either lock the base down and then again, <laughs> don't leave quickly. Just wait in there or loot and scoot get away as quick as you can. Now I'm tempted to get into all sorts of details on how to raid, how to spot the best weaknesses, or how to loot, but this is already getting a bit long and it's not what this video is about. This video is the takeaway that for solos you need to be ninjas, not staying in one location for four minutes while satchels are going off, or um, even after lockdown. I'd watch a 30 minute video Till no one is in the area, um, some people will wait for you to leave, or even waiting for you to go home. I mean, they aren't stupid. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I feel like I have to say that the egress or, or leaving is just as tricky as arriving or doing the deed. Before you leave the base, I mean, this is if you've locked it down. Like, you've destroyed the TC and you've put your own door and your own lock. Um, don't load up all the loot and just leave. Listen, look, spawn outside. I mean, that's part of the PPPP, you know, that prior planning. You should have put down a, a bag near the raid. Spawn outside, you know, do some, search the area, clear the way. Make sure it's safe all the way home. Then come back. Loot up and go. So, all you rusty freaks, if you've never really been a raider or you wonder how would you do it as a solo, this is it. It's not hard when you do it smart. So, good luck out there. Give it a go. Let me know how you went in, in comments on my next video or on this video. Hit like if this helped you out or if it rang true. Please subscribe. Um, seems like nowadays only 5% of you have subscribed. Also, if you're wondering why I only showed rating a 2x2, two two, that's part of my strategy. And I guess if I did a longer how to raid video, I'd be talking about what kind of bases to target. But the kind of bases you should be targeting are 2x2s two without honeycomb. Because if you target smaller bases, chances are there's not going to be much in there. If you target honeycombed or larger or metal bases, it's also likely to be empty. It might have already been raided or they might have left the server or quit or whatever. So often I've raided big, big serv big bases, and it's not, it hasn't been worth it. So if you raid a two by two that's unhoneycombed and there's nothing in there, it hasn't cost you much. But uh, you'd be surprised how often they are very profitable. I think that's it, guys. A recap: Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Get a mug. Step one: the method one is the wham bam, thank you, ma'am. So just blow up the wall as fast as you can. That basically limits you to C4. Go okay, boom, boom. Grab everything you can and then run away. And the second method is a two-step method where you blow up. You know, you might throw three rockets at a wall and then go home for half an hour to 50 minutes and then come back, throw a fourth rocket, empty the TC or blow up the TC, loot and scoot. Yeah, I think that's about it. Ciao. I got raided by Old Man Paxus.